following interview was conducted with Sherman Kessler for the Purdue University Oral History Project. It took place on Thursday, July the 27th at uh, Purdue University Libraries Stewart Center 263. The interviewer is Catherine M. Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. This is part two of the Oral History Interview. Where we first, first off, um, you also belong to quite a few agricultural associations. Um, one of them was the Hog Collar Education Committee. Can you tell us a little bit about that? What your work was involved with the Hog, hog Collar Eradication Project? Yes. In the fall of 1959, uh -huh. Indiana Farm Bureau called together some uh, persons interested in hog color eradication, and I went to the meeting in the interest of uh, Kessler Farms. We had been in the Poland China hog breeding business since the 1920s, and we were concerned about the hog color and experiences with it, and vaccination, and possible eradication. Uh, not knowing what I got in, was, was getting into, I volunteered to be chairman of that committee. Uh, this was in the fall of 1959, and it was a, about a 23-member committee, all phases of the swine industry in the state, including, including a state veterinarian's office and, and a representative from the School of Veterinary Medicine, uh, who was Don Gustafson. And we had regular meetings uh, from October 1959 until the first part of the 1970s when hog cholera was eradicated nationwide. Uh, during that time, most of the time, uh, Indiana Farm Bureau representative Marion Stackhouse, the secretary of this committee, he uh, scheduled the meetings and notified the members and kept the minutes. So that was quite an experience relative to the uh, various meetings and uh, other activities I had, including uh, appearing before the state legislature and uh, before a congressional committee. It was uh, cooperative with the, the U.S. U.S. government, so uh, that, that was quite a nice experience. Um, as a result of that, you got an award from the uh, Indiana pork industry. Did they give you some real award for meritorious service? Do you remember that getting that award? Yes, uh, that one, and then uh, there was a national organization. I can't think of the name of it now. They very nicely gave me these awards, yes. Very nice, okay, fine. Now, we'll start, we'll talk a little bit about when you were on the Board of Trustees. How did you get, how were you appointed to the Board, which I understand was in 1973? Yes. Well, a long-time member of the Board, Guy Wilson from Kokomo, indicated to Governor Bowen that he was going off, uh, and didn't want another appointment. He'd been on the for 20 some years. So I approached Governor Bowen indicating my interest in becoming a member of the board. And he appointed me uh, to go on the board in 1973 for a three, three year term. And then he reappointed me for, for uh, two more three year terms. And then Governor Orr appointed me for two after that. So I was on the board for 15 years. Um, one of one of the things that um, is up with the board, the student trustee voting. This was the first time in 1975 when the voting, a voting member for the student was appointed on the board, and you were on the board at that time. Was that, uh, but before that, had, had there been a, a voting member for the, representing the students on the board before 1975, do you remember, recall? There was not a voting member. Okay. There was a student representative to the Board of Trustees, but the voting member went in after I 
proposed legislative action. What was the difference between a, a what would what would the representative do? Just sit, attend the meetings, a student representative, but didn't have vote, was not able to vote. The representative did not have a vote, but they could uh, make a statement to the board if they wished. Okay. They could partake in the discussion if they wished. Limited in a limited way. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Fine. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the statewide technology program, which got started uh, around 1984, I guess, in Kokomo? The board was involved. Was the board involved in some of that, or you know, the statewide technology program? Oh, well, yes, that was the start, and uh, I don't recall too much about it. Uh -huh. It was one of those uh, university actions where it was just presented to the board for a vote, and. Uh, don't remember too much about it. Okay. Of course, I know as of now it's spread statewide. Okay. Um, the technology building. You had there were quite a few buildings. One was a new technology building when you were on the board. Where the technology building, Kanoi Hall. Kanoi Hall was around Re and President yes. Reagan visited when he came. Yes, I remember President Reagan's visit, and uh -huh. I got to know more Kanoi real well because he was chairman of the Board of Trustees for a long time. Uh-huh. Do you remember, did, did you, where did you see President Reagan? Did you get a chance to say hello to him when he was here? No, I, as I recall, he spoke at, in uh, Mackey Arena, and I was there, but I didn't get to speak sure. to him, no. Right. That was kind of a big, big event in town. It was uh, a big no, event. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Right. Okay. Um, let's see. One of the things that uh, the board is involved in is, is naming is involved in the search for a president and of course when you were on that board was that when President Barry before he came on became president or that was while you were on the board I was on the board when President Barry was selected and candidly convinced that he could handle the job and appointed yes when I was on the board what are uh, some of the activities? Were you on any special committees of the Board of Trustees while you were a member? They do have some committees, don't they? I was on a compensation committee for a while. Okay. Is that a faculty compensation, faculty staff compensation, like retirement or health benefits? What? Well, it was a, a whole realm of compensation, including those that you mentioned, plus uh, well, for instance, the uh, secretary of the board, all all those compens all those salary recommendations were, were involved. Right, and also the faculty promotions. Finally, you approve faculty promotions that they have every year. It comes before the board, does it not? Faculty promotions, for the most part, were submitted to the board right. uh -huh. for, for approval. For approval. That's right. Okay. And does the board set up its schedule of meetings when they're going to be? How do they how do they set that up? So they meet different times during the year. Well, the secretary of the board of trustees is a very important position as far as the activities of the board are concerned. And yes, those meetings are scheduled a good while ahead. And they set the meet. She sets the, they set the meeting dates and things of that sort. I'm do sorry. They set the dates of the meetings. That's the right. Secretary. And they send material in advance for you to look at before you get together. Yes, there's a, uh -huh. a schedule in the program. Right. Okay. Um, talk, um, during your tenure, what about the regional campuses? They kind of grew a little bit, didn't they? The regional campus? There's IUPUI and... Yes, all the regional campuses uh, uh, kept growing and uh, improving. And, uh, Trying to think, the Calumet campus uh, achieved a, an official status. I forget as what it was while I was on the board. Mm -hmm. Sort of more autonomous. Was that what sort of status uh, were you talking about? What What did you mean by that? I'm sorry. Uh, what sort? Did, what What uh, Calumet? What's uh, status? You said or? Okay. Yes, uh, I forget the terms, okay. but. Uh, 
it became more autonomy. More of a well, autonomy. That's a good word for it. Yes. One of the things that um, you hear so much about is the General Assembly ad adopted that uh, re repair and rehabilitation in 1981, and that helps a little bit with the maintenance of the buildings, doesn't it? The funding that comes from the state legislature. Oh yes, and it's, as you probably know, it's been pretty deficient. But between then and now, to keep a, keep the maintenance, maintenance of the buildings, of the buildings yeah. right? Do you, uh, what about anything with the town and gown, the university club? Were, was there any re, any club, uh, relations like that? Is there a town and gown club that they have here or not within the community? Or not? I don't think there's so. a town and gown okay. um, group here, no. You got quite a few achievements. You were, you're on the, are you still on the Alpha Gamma Rose Scholarship Foundation board? Are you still on that board? Or not? No, I'm not on that board. But you now. got a Sagamore the Wabash. Did you get one? I have two of them, yes. Whoa. How did tell us how that came about? Did, was it a surprise? What did you get one from different governors or one from Doctor Bowen, Governor Bowen and one from Governor Orr. Okay. Yes. Tell how did how did you find out about it or what tell us a little bit about the Sagamore? Well, of course I, I didn't know that they were going to do that. And I assume it was because of my status and tenure on the Board of Trustees that I was awarded by each of those governors. Did they have a, a special ceremony when they gave it to you, do you recall? Well, no, there wasn't a special ceremony that I recall. In fact, is I don't remember just how the, the Governor or the Governor of Bowen, Sagamore was awarded. I do remember that the uh, Sagamore of Wabash that uh, came from Governor Orr was presented to me by uh, President Bering at a Fourth of July party at our house. Uh, my wife Jane had an annual Fourth of July party, which entailed a birthday party for Earl Bunch, whose uh, birthday is on July 3rd. And, uh, Whose birthday's on July 3rd? Who, whose is on July 3rd? Earl Butts had Earl a Butts. birthday. And uh, our birthday party became well known to the point where uh, then uh, Congressman John Myers would stop every year. And uh, the bearings were there this particular year. So this was a, an event that I know the event that she put on for several years. And that's, at that one is when you got one of your Sagamores? That's when uh, Dr. Baring presented it for Governor Orr, yes. Very nice. But you were surprised? Yes. Did you get to know uh, Governor Bowen uh, pretty well? Did you know him pretty well, Governor uh, Dr. Bowen? I knew Dr. Bowen real well. I checked on his status and health just last month. And he lives in Bremen, Indiana. Uh -huh. His, uh, his third wife and, and uh, doing well health-wise and otherwise, yes. Good. So he's in pre doing pretty well. And did you get to know uh, Governor Orr fairly well, too? Not as well as... As, as, as Dr. Bowen. As Governor Bowen. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. A um, couple of other awards that I see that you got was the uh, Agricultural Alumni Association Certificate of Distinction in 1989. You're a lifetime member of the Alumni Association, aren't you? Lifetime? I'm a lifetime member of the Purdue Alumni Association. Okay. And the Purdue Ag Alumni Association, it's kind of continuous. There are no dues, but no official certificate or anything like that. Uh -huh. is, there are two organizations. One is the what Ag Alumni, and the other is the Purdue Alumni Association. Yes. They're, they're separate. Yes, yes. And they have different heads of the, or directors of each, don't they? Yes. Uh, Donya Lester is head of the uh, uh, Ag Alumni Association. Uh, the Purdue Alumni Association just recently changed heads. I don't know his name. Yes, I know. They've had some, they've some changes over there, I think. It's, it's going to, let's see, got a couple more things. Is there anything special that you, uh, you'd like to comment on your experience?
experiences on the Board of Trustees that people that are studying that year would, would like, you'd like to share with them? Anything particular? One thing comes to mind. I'd had it, some experience in the legislature and politically before it came on the board. And I was aware that, uh, assuming it's okay to name names, <laughs> there was a um, Dick Wells who was superintendent of the state school superintendent who was uh, interested in eliminating uh, the new Ivy Tech. And one of the things he did was uh, misallocate funds from Ivy Tech to high schools where they had vocational programs. And Don Gentry at that time was on the, uh, was a, the director of vocational education for the state of Indiana. His job was to allocate funds from the government to various vocational areas in the state, including Ivy Tech. And I became aware he knows about this, that uh, Dick Wells had misallocated $232,000 was supposed to come to Purdue University. Well, I knew about this. So I hadn't been on the board very long until I went to Lytle Freehafer's office, who was uh, Fred Ford's predecessor, uh, business manager, and uh, told them, I had a thought about the possibility of recovering at $232,000. Well, they looked kind of amazed at me, I would say. And they told me, relative to their files, they'd put it under debt file. They'd given up entirely on recovering that. Well, Don Gentry in his office, and uh, a new uh, superintendent of public instruction by the name of Harold Eggley, conceived the idea of uh, over a period of five or six years increasing the amount that was allocated to to make up that 232000 which they did. And I was kind of happy that that happened. Yes. When you were on the board, is anything um, that kind of sticks in your mind and is something special that, that came about, or did you enjoy your experience overall on the board, on the board of trustees? Oh, it was a very enjoyable experience. You mentioned you got some relationships with people. You got to know, pretty, work pretty closely together. Yes, there was a, the official relationship, and then as time went on, uh, got well acquainted with the, the people, and the personal friendships have, have uh, continued ever since yeah. with some of them. And one thing I might mention relative to experience on the board, in addition to enjoying it, one hoping that one made a positive contribution in one way or another once in a while was how well the spouses were treated. My wife enjoyed it so very much. She got so well acquainted with Jane Baring and uh, uh, made special trips up here to attend women's uh, organization events and this, this sort of thing. So that's, uh, that's some of the things I the think of. One of the things in the paper that you shared with me is this global order for advanced thinking. Can you make any comments about that? You sort of got shared some things and you gave me, I looked at that. The test of knowledge, I think this, the test of knowledge is in its, its application. Um, You've doing some thinking along this line for this, I'm talking to some people about it, have you not? On this well, global order. Without going into the background leading up to this, this thinking of uh, the potential for a global order for advanced thinking, uh, I'd had some experiences here at Purdue which indicated to me that uh, the institution, not only at Purdue, but the institutionalism in higher education had limitations as well as potential. And looking beyond the institution and beyond the current thinking uh, was this potential of what I have termed the exp exploration of the three 
pound universe between the ears. And that term... That kind of catches to, people. <laughs> to me, uh, the potential of exploring that universe between the ears has greater potential for the advancement of civilization and the determination of going in the right direction and several other potentials. It has more potential than the space exploration that's been going on here uh, for, some years. for many years, for many years. And it happened after I came up with this idea and wrote this general letter that you've read that uh, MIT received a $350 million donation for brain research. And I have some information relative to six other institutions in the country that are working on brain and mind action and, and uh, what goes on between the ears. So I think this has great potential. By the way, I have been able to submit that idea to several people here on the, on the campus. Okay, okay. One thing that I, I noticed, which I forgot to mention, are you still on the nursing school community advisory board? Yes. What, does that, what does that entail? What are you, some of your involvement with that? How, you've been on it for a while. When I went off the uh, Board of Trustees in 1988, just a very few days or weeks after that, then head of the nursing school, Linnell Geddes, asked me to be on what was then the nursing school advisory committee, which had members from the community for this committee that met a couple of times a year. And that uh, evolved into what is now the uh, nursing school community advisory board which has a wider range of representation in the community. And yes, is I'm it still a local, co local community or uh, people in other states that are on this board? Uh, the board members are primarily local. Within Indiana or within Tippecanoe County? I would say other than my being in Montgomery County, the rest of them would be from Tippecanoe County. Oh, okay. So it's local within the yes. region. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Well, I think I'm going to ask you, are there any things that, uh, any questions you want to ask that we didn't mention or anything that you'd like to share with us in kind of a general wrap-up? Well, I thought before coming up here today, I would try to follow your lead more than last time. And uh, what we've discussed covers a wide range of my experience. I know that there's some of it not included. Uh, Is there something one, you want to add? One thing that I think of uh -huh. was the, uh, I would say, opportunities of involvement after I went off the board. And one of these was to nominate, and three were selected for the Purdue Alumni Association community advisory, community uh, community awards. And of those three people, three awards, one was Sir George Mitchell from Marshall, Illinois, who had a wide experience and history of contributions to his community, Marshall, Illinois, and the county, and the, and the county, and some statewide. I nominated him. He was selected for the first one. The second one was Kathy Willey, then from Lebanon, now from Indianapolis. She was state representative for two terms, but her contributions to uh, organizations and the community of Lebanon were very outstanding to the extent that she was given the award. And the last one, just two or three years ago, the award was a joint award to Dick and Jeannie Ward, 
Dutch, Dick and Jeannie Ward, who live near Linden. And both of them have been so very active in their home communities. And uh, plus, uh, Jeannie was on a member of the Ivory Tech Region 4 board here for 15 or 18 years. So that was a pleasant experience to have that happen. And uh, thinking of this, there wasn't any formal appointment, but I suggested in a rather detailed letter to the president's office that Don Parlberg sh should be considered for the Griffin Award, which he was considered, and he received that award just a few years ago before he passed away. And he was so very pleased to have received that. So those are some highlights relative to, uh, between going off the board and now. And um, and you still in the farm. You still live on the same property, though, as you mentioned the last time. I live on the same property. I live in the same house with Jane, my wife, who passed away in 1994, and I started to live in 1948. Yes, when uh, my brother, son, and I sold our farm, gave possession in 1925. We retained our three houses, so I live where we had lived all those years on, on the farm, yes, Very good. in the southeastern Montgomery County, about 40 miles south, a little east of here. Okay. And wrap up anything, any closing comments you want to share? Or? As you look back, that you want to reflect on? Well, two or three points. One is I have very much enjoyed, and I'm still enjoying, my relationship with Purdue University. I gave you a sheet that showed I had an official connection with Purdue since 1932, 74 years ago, a series of, of uh, connections which, from a standpoint of every one of them involving either mature, either uh, materials or uh, personnel from the university, making it constant for 74 years. And uh, I've enjoyed that all very much. And one thing I haven't gone into here, and I don't intend to, but some of the adverse experiences I've had here at the university. There have been some, frankly. So uh, this is, and I might just say relative to the uh, advancements that uh, have been made under the street strategic plan and President Jiski have been very impressive and uh, I sure wish the university well in the future. Thank you very much, Chair. This concludes our interview.